So, so what you said was、um, very important is that piece of being gentle. But you're in a sport that, for some people, is considered pretty aggressive. I know my my、uh, nieces and nephew totally into the MMA and all that stuff, and so. Their way of looking at it is these athletes are very strong people, and 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 supposed to be tough. How 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 has that affect you in terms of your image now, with the whole story that came out from、uh, the suicide, the depression that you talk about? How has that affected your career? Um. You know, one aspect of it is that I don't know. I mean it. It, it shows the fragility of, of, you know, us as humans, and that that we're fallible. You know that we have、uh, everyone's got real issues, and it, it comes from different places. You know, whether it's your childhood, whether it's current things, whether it's substance abuse.、Um, you know, whatever it is, everyone's entitled to feel the way that they feel.、Uh, for me, I、um, I don't know. I. I love the sport. Yes, it can be aggressive, but to me,、um, my entire life I've always been on the go. Like I, I need to move. I need that stimulation. I need to be into things and active. You know, when I was a little kid and I saw a tree, I needed to climb it. If I was on a playground, it was time to run. Like I, I, I have to move. And a lot of times, while I was going through this process with my husband passing away, you know, people were like, "How do you do it? How do you do it?" And for me, it was like I. Needed to move, because the longer I sat and didn't move, the the more my thoughts could catch up with me, and and they could easily go down the rabbit hole of being extremely negative and extremely scared and extremely, you know,、uh, powerful on a on a not conducive side to to feeling better about it, and、um, to find a hobby, to find something to try to be successful at, and on top of it, be the example that I needed. To, If if someone could have shown it to me, and then on top of it, knowing that my son is watching, and I'm in a position to be an example for him, whether that's good or bad, I am in a position to be an example, and、um, you know, it it really became my therapy, you know, continuing and and going and and hitting things and breathing the way I was breathing and the intensity and and the days that I was the hammer and the days that I was the nail and still getting through them. One way or the other, and all of that,、um, you know, it, it makes me very human, and it made it a lot easier to deal with、uh, the spotlight of what I'm doing because the fact that me continuing to succeed in what I was doing, regardless of the circumstances, made other people feel like they could do it too, and the fact that it was doing that for them inspired me to continue to do it. So as much as I could give. What people don't see is that I was receiving the same thing by them taking it in that light and doing something with it. So I want to get a little bit into how you cope after his death as a family together. But before that,、um, a few minutes ago, you talk about some of the warning signs. Right, he was、um, dealing with his mental health as well. Talk to us more about what other warning signs that, hindsight looking back,、okay. it it would. You know, signal、uh, the family out there to be more paying more attention to.、It. Right.、Um, one of the things that,、uh, in hindsight, that I look back as the as the warning signs were,、um, you know, he really started to get into substance abuse,、okay. and I felt like that was his way of numbing the thoughts and the feelings that he was feeling, and in his own way, like self medicating,、okay. and. Although I do believe that there are different and better ways of self-medicating, sometimes that's not what makes sense to people, especially with that level of mental illness going on.、Um, you know, as mammals, as animals, as as creations on this planet, like our number one instinct should be to survive. You know, it should be to survive, to procreate, to eat, to you know have your territory. That's that's the The number one instinct of of us as being living things, and、um, so for someone to not have that instinct obviously means something isn't adding up, you know. And、um, you know he was starting to isolate. You know he he started feeling paranoid. He had things that、um, you know problems he was creating for himself、um, that were almost a, a sabotage and a,、um, you know self-deprecating behavior. 
and those things to a certain extent were, were pushing me and pushing a lot of people away from him in ways that also made him sad you know so it was uh it was a tricky animal it was something that I really didn't know what to do with and um you know he he was a great person and a charismatic person and then um at the end he was unrecognizable anymore mm -hmm. and um you know he there's there's a ton of things he could have done differently but that's not the space he was in and I understand and I get and I'm very sad that that is his solution to what he thought was an irreparable problem but um I, d I don't know I mean I think that spreading awareness and talking about things and realizing as as strong and as smart and as successful as he was like he could also have these things going on in him just like anyone else you don't have to be down in the dumps and low and and think crappy of yourself in order to have these feelings in the background like this is very very real for a lot of people that you would never even think mm -hmm.